Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> but today, let us begin in the Gospel of John. The Gospel according to John, chapter 1. This is my favorite gospel. Chapter 1, and we're going to begin at verse 1. And we're going to read 18 verses today. Amen. And it reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Darkness cannot comprehend light. There was a man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the beginning, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time, the one and only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. Amen. I want to kind of continue in a lesson title from last week. Uh, the kingdom of the sun, I just believe is so relevant. I, I, I just believe it's so significant, the distinction that's used right here, uh, because it's, it is the will of God that this kingdom be uniquely Christ. Amen. So we're going to continue with this lesson titled the kingdom of the sun. Amen. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we're just so grateful this morning just for waking us up father just for giving us another chance at life though we'd rather be with you father we understand that as long as we're here on earth that you're not finished with us that we're in your will and father we just pray that you would give us the strength the wisdom the know-how the ability uh, to perform all things that's in your will for we cannot do them in and of ourselves. And right now, Father God, we just die to ourselves so that you can live in us and through us. And Father, educate us right now through your word and through your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. There are attributes, characteristics, and ways of God that we could never fully understand. Amen like his sovereignty, right? And within God's sovereignty, we discover another attribute that's even more far-fetched, and it's his omniscience. Sovereignty means all-powerful, supreme. God's power can't be phantomed 
or imagine. It's that deep. He does exactly what pleases him, and what pleases him will come to pass. No doubt about it. Amen. Or as the Bible puts it in biblical terms, his will, which is what pleases him or what he desires to happen, shall come to pass. Amen. Where am I going with this? The truth of the matter is, since the beginning of time, God's original intent has always been to establish this new kingdom here on earth through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. It just remained a mystery to the coming of Christ in the New Testament. Amen. I love, as I stated before, I love the gospel according to John because it's unique amongst the other gospels. All the gospels are awesome, but they are a, little, a bit distinctive. And I love John's gospel. He begins by referencing the beginning with the goal of highlighting the supremacy and deity of Christ. Very important. Confirming two main truths behind the gospel. That Christ did in fact come from God, yet embodies deity itself. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Yet the word was God. Very powerful. John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. But as many as received him, Christ, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believed in his name. And back then, your name represents your character, your substance of who you are. Very important. 13, who were born not of blood, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. So it's a fact that Christ, and, 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 and see, this is one of the main truths behind the gospel that we must gravitate to, that we must believe that he in fact came from God, that he is the only begotten son. Amen. This being born only references Christ's carnation, right? The carnation means him taking on flesh <clears throat> because God has no beginning or ending. So this isn't literal in saying that, that Christ was born because he doesn't have a beginning, nor does he have an ending. Amen? The word right, R-I-G-H-T, here is a legal term. If you have the right to do something, that means you have authorization from up high. And man, when something comes from up high, it cannot be changed unless it's changed from up high, right? It's set in stone. The fact that a right has to be given means that beforehand it was unlawful. Right? What was unlawful? It was unlawful for humans, mankind, to be children of God. Or in other words, it was condemned. Why? Because of sin. It was condemned. Romans 6 and 23, for the penalty of sin is death. It was the penalty. We were condemned to death. <clears throat> because of Adam. Uh, forgive me if I cough a few times. For the penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ. Or in other words, the will of God is eternal life through Christ. It always been his will. The will of God has always been for us to have eternal life through Christ. Amen. So we talked about God's sovereignty. Now let's discuss his omniscience. And this is in reference to his will. I want to kind of focus on his will so we can understand 
My aim is to prove that God always intended for the kingdom, his kingdom, to be given to his son from the beginning. Amen? So in seeking to understand God's will, it's important to note his omniscience, right? Meaning, his omniscience means he knows all things even before they happen, right? We can't relate to this attribute, but oh, if we could, right? Just imagine. All of us have made plans, right? But see, the problem with our planning is that they can be thwarted or compromised due to unsealable future events of misfortunes or, or dilemmas, right? We can't factor that into our planning because we can't see that far. Amen. It's just like, give you an example. It's just like somebody planning to buy a house, right? Okay, that's their plan. But they plan to buy a house next year. But before next year even come, unsealable future misfortune arises in unemployment. Boom. Plan thwarted. No more buying a house. Right? We couldn't see that far. That person who was planning to buy a house, he couldn't see that he was going to lose his job. But see, God is different. God's planning is different. And when considering his planning, we must consider his omniscience. Amen? Amen? We must take into consideration his omniscience. As God wills or as God plans, he factors in foreknowledge. Right? As he wills, and this is something that God has has been did, his will never changes. He don't come up with new ideas. As he willed, he's already seen it unfold. Right? So in other words, God knows exactly how his will will unfold. Every little detail. Amen? Nothing surprises God. Nothing is by chance or by coincidence. Amen? Things that may seem contrary to his plan is actually perfectly planned out. Amen? Isaiah 55, 8 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. And and, and this is something we must grasp even as we walk with him. Right? Because his will even pertains us as his children. Even those who ain't his children, his will will be done. We think that we're in control, but we're not. There's only one that's in control, and everything responds to his will. Amen? And this is very important for the believer to understand, and this will help us, this will help us trust him more. This is why we walk by faith and not by sight. Because, see, sight can get us down. Sight can can cause doubt and and confusion with us as it relates to God's plan. Well, hold on, God. You said that that I'm going to be blessed. You said that I'm the head and not the tail. You said that. That's right. He said it, but you got to believe it. You got to believe it. You can't understand it because his ways are his ways. We'll die. Our head will explode trying to figure out God. Trying to understand him, you know, the, the commercial where people head, the top of their head just explode and the, the purple dust come out. <coughs> <coughs> That'll be us trying to understand or figure God out because his thoughts are his thoughts. His ways are his ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And it's going to be like that. And we just got to trust that God, you're higher than me. You're so much beyond me. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven 
and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. This is his will. His will is his word that he's spoken about a thing, right? It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. <coughs> we just talked about that. God does exactly what he pleases. And what he pleases, what pleases him, will by, in, by all means come to pass. How it comes to pass is the thing, but it will come to pass. Amen? And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen? The Bible says God does not change. Right? That he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if God doesn't change, that means his will doesn't change neither. As we say, he's not spontaneous. He's not like humans. He's not coming up with great ideas every day. No, he's already worked it out from the beginning. He sees the ending from the beginning. And everything works according to his will. God knew Adam would fall and lose dominion. He knew it. It was a part of his will. <clears throat> as crazy as that may seem, but again, don't wrap your mind too much around it because his ways are his ways. We can't understand it. We can't fathom it. Like, Lord, God, like, like, let's even apply that to our personal lives. Lord, if you're in control and so sovereign, why are you allowing me to go through this? Doesn't make sense to the human, but it's supposed to make sense. See, we got to throw sense out the window in pertaining to God. <coughs> See, in order to, 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 to obtain heavenly wisdom, godly wisdom, you got to do away with human wisdom. You got to bag it up and put it out there in the trash can. Because this Christian walk would never make sense. Because it's in our nature to try to figure out, but we can't figure them out. This thing is about trust and faith. God knew Adam would fall and lose dominion. It was a part of his will. This was the way he saw fit to introduce his son as king and lord of all. This was the way. Why else would Christ be slain before the foundation of the world? Before the world was even created, Christ was slain. Why would that be so if it wasn't in God's plan? Amen. To say or even think that Satan disrupted or sabotaged God's plan is to say that God is not sovereign. And that would be an insult to God. I mean, if, 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 if we say the Bible says he's sovereign, Sovereign means all-powerful, not 98% not sovereign. See, that's room for error. No, there's, there's no room for error with God. He doesn't error. He, he, he doesn't miss it. <clears throat> not even by a little bit. He's sovereign. And another, another attribute is his providence. In his sovereignty, there's providence, his ability to care for what he's created and the ability to care for his will, to see it through. He will see it through. He is seeing it through. This is what you got to wake up and say, even as you face the things that the Bible say you will face in, in this world, you will have tribulation, but, but be of good cheer. Why? Because he's seeing it through. The Bible says he has overcome the world. 
<laughs> God knew. It was his will all along that this kingdom be his sons. Colossians chapter 1 reveals this mystery that's been hidden since the ages. God wanted it to be hidden because he wanted the introduction of Christ to be grand like no other. Colossians chapter 1, 15, 15 through 20. He is the image of the invisible God. We're talking about Christ, the Son of God, the firstborn over all creation. Again, this isn't referencing his, his actual existence because he's always existed. This is referencing his coronation. For by him... All things were created, and again, it, it also references rank, meaning he's first. He's first. Nothing is before him. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen? The beginning and the ending. There's nothing before him. There's nothing after him. Amen? For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things consist. All things consist, meaning he holds all things together. Even the things that don't look right. Christ is holding it together. This is his providence. This is God's providence at work. Amen? He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That's significant. We're going to get there. That in all things, he, Christ, may have the preeminence. This is so significant. So imagine this. It's God's will that Christ be first or superior in all things, right? This is what preeminence means, right? Preeminence is the fact of surpassing all things, superiority. <clears throat> Why is this so significant? Well, it was only one thing God wasn't superior in. One thing. Death. God was not superior in death. Why? Why? Because God can't die. It's not in his nature to die. God cannot die. So he wasn't superior to death. Y'all got to follow me, right? And his will will make more sense because it's the will of the Father that Christ be preeminent. That means first in all things. We just read he was the firstborn from the dead. Right? Because that was the will of the Father, that, that, that Christ surpasses all things and all people in all things. Well, the only thing he couldn't, he hadn't surpassed anybody in was death. Because he cannot die. Right? But we serve an intelligent God. So what did he do? He put on flesh that could die, but yet remain Yahweh. The everlasting God that couldn't die. We call this the hypostatic union. See, he was smart. To experience, because that's what God the Father wanted to do. He wanted to experience what we experience. But it was only one way to do it. It was to put on flesh. But he, 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 he never forfeited his deity. He remained fully Yahweh at the same time. <clears throat> Now, he's superior or preeminent even to death. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Hades ruled the world. 
Satan was the prince of the air. Adam forfeited dominion to Satan. Christ came to take it back because truth of the matter is it was already his. It was only his to claim. So now death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory of both through who? Jesus Christ. So now Christ takes preeminence over all things. Now even death has to bow to him and respected him because he beat it. No one has ever beat it, death. But the right person to do it is God. Because even death is a principality of power. He said all these things were created through him and for him. So he's the right person to defeat it. Amen? 19, for it pleased the Father that in him, Christ, all his fullness should dwell, as should your son, right? And by him to reconcile all things to himself, the Father. Whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. So in other words, it, it, if God's will involved redemption, then his will had to also involve a fall. How else can something be redeemed? Amen? His will never changes. He, he doesn't pop up with new ideas. He wasn't surprised when Satan made his move in the, in, in, in the, in the garden. And now, oh, well, let me go back to the drawing board. No, that's, that's not the God we serve because he's sovereign. He's all-powerful. And within his sovereignty, we see omniscience where he knows all things. He has foreknowledge, and he factors this in when he's at his drawing board. Amen? He is El Shaddai, God Almighty. Hallelujah. Isaiah 14 and 27, for the Lord of hosts has purposed, that means he has willed or planned, and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? So ask yourself this. What did Satan really accomplish in the garden except God's will? <laughs> he ain't accomplished nothing but the will of God. <laughs> Satan is only God's puppet. Amen. Satan ruled the earth through sin. The Genesis chapter 3 says the seed of the woman will crush the head of Satan. See, right? That's dominion. Headship signifies dominion. In the wilderness, Satan offered Jesus the earth and his fullness, but little did he know the earth was already his. It already belonged to him, and he was here to claim what was rightfully his. But see, Satan don't have foreknowledge. He don't know that. He think he's victorious, and now he want to offer Christ something because he, he really thinks his dominion is permanent. <clears throat> but he don't know God saw that. He saw it before he formed the earth. Colossians chapter 1 says that the world was created for Christ. It was his all alone. This was the will of the Father. This is just how it played out. What we can't understand is the process. That's what wrecks our brain. But we got to trust God that he works all things out for the good of those who are called according to his great purpose. Amen? 
Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. This, 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 this was his goal. This was the mission. This was the plan all along. This was the plan. This was the will. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee. This, this, this just doesn't signify humans with knees. This principalities. This is powers. This is why Christ had to die. So he can take preeminence over all things, even death. Now, even death has to bow down to Christ. Principalities, power, these are things we can't see, but these are things we are affected by. Even it has to bow down to Jesus Christ, meaning it has to reference him. It has to respect him. <coughs> and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The Bible says that death could not hold him. Hallelujah, he is the great I am. He is God Almighty. He is El Shaddai. Hallelujah. He didn't enter the grave as a dead man. He entered the grave as Yahweh. See, man can die, but Yahweh has no ending. He entered the grave to wage war. He is the Lord, strong in battle. Hallelujah. See, he just shed the skin he put on. That's what died, but he never died because God can't die. That's why God is so intelligent. And this is why Satan thought he won, but you're, you're not intelligent as God. He is the Lord mighty in battle. <laughs> Satan thought he won when they had him on the cross. But you was pure. God, God has no flesh. He put on flesh. But yet he remained at the same time God. So the only thing Satan killed was the flesh. But that was the only way into the grave. Where he can take the keys of death and of Hades. That's the only way he could get them. So that he again can take preeminence, superiority over all things. Amen. And the kingdom is his. And you don't have to find yourself left out. All you got to do is call out to the Lord. Amen. When that day comes, you don't have to find yourself on the opposite side. Amen. All you got to do is call out to the Lord. Amen. Romans 10, 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yes, Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ, King and Lord of all. Amen. Let's give God a hand up of praise.